Where does where does he live at? I don't know. I see him up at the Granny's now and then. Uh, well, thank you then for your thank for your time and effort. And uh, we'll be getting back to you. Okay. Uh, when we get the dump made up. You are. Uh, gonna cut out all the I'll let, I'll let you cut them off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take care, Ira. Yeah, we'll see you. Have you been fishing yet this year? Oh, oh man. I'm, I just think no. You seem to be melting a little bit there. Okay. Shirley, you want to give us your full name? Shirley Ann John Barber. And spell it for us, please. Uh, Shirley, S H I R L E Y. N A N N E John J O H N Barber B A R B E R. And your date of birth? 61036. And the location where you were born? Oneida. Uh, you were born at home? Right. Okay. And where was that uh, where was that at? By my grandma and grandpa's house over on um, right over the railroad tracks, I think it's Jason Road. What name? Jason Road, I think that's it. What, what the one what? by Margaret Corns? That road that goes down. Oh, up on uh, just on J there, off of J. Right, and I think it's Jason. Just about a, uh, maybe a half a mile out of Oneida. Mm-hmm. About that. Going, uh, be like going north, north. on J. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's where your grandmother lived. Right. I see. And uh, would you give us the names of your uh, parents when your mother's maiden name? My mother was uh, Mildred Rose Metoxen, and my father was Jasper John. Okay. Do you remember the names of your grandparents? Um, my mom's uh, mom and dad was um, Jenny Carpenter and Henry Metoxen, the one that they call Deep Henry, because I guess there were more than one Henry Metoxens. And what my was, father's... What was her maiden name, your grandmother? Carpenter. Carpenter, okay. Mm -hmm. And my father's was um, Jenny Skinnador and Hudson John. Okay. Now, did you get a chance to know uh, any of your grandparents? I got to know um, my father's mother and my mother's father and mother for a short time only for the grandfather, though, on her side. Okay. All right, let's talk about your dad's parents then. Uh, okay. Did you, you get to know him at all? Um, I knew my grandmother on my dad's side very well. My grandfather passed away when I was about probably not born yet or maybe just born. Okay, so you didn't have an opportunity to, no. uh, to know uh, him at all. Okay. So. Um, what about, oh, let's talk about your grandmother then. What, uh, uh, do you know what kind of education background she had? Not my grandmother, I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did she speak uh, Oneida? She spoke Oneida fluently as well as English. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. did she have a big family? She had five boys and three girls. That's and good. then she about, I think there are two or three of them passed away. I see. As children. All right. And where did, uh, where did they reside? They resided, um, well, from what I know, they resided um, on J going north, and then, as you say, about half a mile on Jason Road over the railroad tracks. Okay. Now, did your uh, grandmother, uh, besides working at home, did she work out at all? No. No? So they, she stayed pretty much around the house then. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you have a big garden? Yes, she did have a big garden. Had to stop it for a while, but she did have um, a very large garden. I would say like half acre. At least she had. She do a lot of canning and uh, cooking. Yes, she did. Yes, she was always cooking and always had something on the stove. So whenever anybody came through, it was the first thing they had was something to eat and either usually tea. I think it was. I don't know if they had too much coffee. What about? Uh, Electricity and lights, did they have any of those? No, no uh, lamps, those 
they had the kerosene lamps that hooked on the wall yet, and then they had a well where they dipped the water out for oh, several years, and then they finally got a hand pump put on it. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you know? What she might have done in terms of um, home care when somebody might be sick or uh, ill? How would they handle that? Gee. Seems like a lot of uh, home remedies she used. I can't remember what all of them are. But I don't remember of a doctor or anybody ever coming to the house or them going to a doctor. Of course, I was quite young when, you know, when that was going on and I didn't live there year round. Okay. Uh, but it, let's talk about your. Uh, Sort of been on the other side now, grandparents, okay. right? Mm-hmm. And where do they live? They lived on, uh, on the other end of the reservation, uh, on Ray Road, and it was about a uh, few on Double E. Go south on Ray Road. And it's probably about. They lived back in there. I see. Did they have uh, place? No, they didn't have a. They had like, like one of those old time. Like Quonset House, like I guess it was a two-story. It was just like one room downstairs and one room upstairs, so there was not too much room. Did they have a, a big family? Um, my grandmother had a big family. My father, uh, as far as I know, only had like um, four children. But my grandmother had like 12 or 13 altogether. Well, this is on your side now? Right, uh huh. Okay. And I don't know what you said. Did they have uh, two? Grandma or Grandma had, there was a person they called Bill, Bill Rhodes. I don't didn't know him. And then uh, there were two other families in between the Bill Rhodes family and my mom's family. Okay. So grandma had like four different marriages. So you, you was, there was quite a few children then. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, what you remember about your grandfather uh, in terms of his, you know anything about his education? No, I don't. Neither grandmother nor grandfather that I know. I think most of the things were like self-taught for all of them. Uh, did uh, they both speak Oneida? I don't know if my, my grandmother did not on my mom's side. I don't remember my dad, grandfather rather, her dad. I them said any words. I think being deaf, you know, I don't even could. Oh, I see. Yeah. He was deaf? Yes. I see. Mm -hmm. And so. what kind of occupation was he in? Just a farmer, I think, his own farmland. I can't even say it was his own farmland. I'm not really sure how they survived, to be honest with you, as far as income, except that they had a garden that was not too large, and they both went out in the woods a lot and got different like medicinal plants, and Grandma got a lot of, um, like, berries and things that she'd bring home and can. Mm -hmm. so now, what about know. your grandmother? Do you remember uh, did she ever about her education? No, she never did. In fact, I don't her ever even mentioning education. Mm -hmm. So I don't and know. Did she work out of the home? No, she stayed home as home well. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did a lot of canning and cooking also? Right. Uh -huh. She's another one that always had something on a stove for anybody who came. You know, it was always something that she offered them to eat. And they raised chickens. Remember chickens? And she had geese. And I think they raised like a pig or so each year. They had. Uh, all right. 
uh, tell me a little bit about your uh, other father, uh, about your dad's background. What uh, kind of education he might have had? Dad went to about third grade. Go any further. Mom went to about fourth grade. And somehow my father got trained to be a cement finisher. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not sure how that happened or it just seems like it was magic now that I think about it. He, he wasn't doing it the next time he was doing it. So that's what he was, was a cement finisher. And mom stayed home and was a homemaker. She worked at home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, did either one of your uh, parents speak one either? My father spoke fluently. Mom could understand it, but she couldn't speak it. I see. Mm-hmm. Now, you worked out then uh, uh, be as a cement finisher then? Right, contract. Mm-hmm. And where was the uh, homestead located? Five miles south on East. That, uh, where we finally, when they did my place, that's where it was. Five miles south of what? Of Oneida here. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Topito, right? I know, but they <laughs> yeah. were on the film. <laughs> right. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Um, you were in the family? I had one brother and one sister. And what are their names? Uh, my brother's name is Hobart, and my sister's name was Vernadine. Okay, and were you, where were you at the... Uh, in the middle. You're in the middle. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now, your mother, uh, she, she stayed home and was a homemaker. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did a lot of cooking, sewing, and things. Gardening. She had a huge garden, and she did a lot of canning, sewing. She did cooking, sewing bread, and I can't remember of eating Batten bread till I was probably about maybe 13 or 14. And they thought they were giving us a treat, bringing batten bread, and we didn't like it too well. <laughs> took us a while to get used to eating it, but we did. Now, did, did uh, you have uh, electric lights and running water? We didn't have, like my son tells us, yeah, we had to run after the water. We did have a pump by the house. And we did not have electricity again until I was probably about 16, somewhere in there before we had electricity. So you had to haul water then? Right. Wasn't the pump was right there. I was still, mm-hmm. we had to bring it in all the time. And what church did your uh, parents attend? The Episcopal Church. Episcopal Church? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The one that's... <laughs> uh, what would be a, um, a typical a holiday? Anything about the holidays? Is the holidays. Maybe Fourth of July or Christmas or Easter. Well, on Easter we always attended uh, early mass and came home. Uh, when we'd come to church at the church, uh, the church would give this, the children like a candy and stuff and have a big breakfast over at the parish hall and that was pretty much what Easter was all about. Um, Christmas time, I can't remember really having a Christmas tree or knowing about Christmas till I was proud about, oh gee, five or six were in there. And Christmas again, the big thing to church. Christmas Eve and Fourth of July. I remember the old parades we had, and that was always special. We always enjoyed the parade where they would come from up the hill, I think, and end up down at the church here. What about uh, New Year's? I would. We would go. Yes, we would go as a family. We'd go visit from place to place and be hoyani along. As we got older, um, a group of us would go hoyaning from place to place. Then it just kind of died out. Nobody wanted to go and do it anymore. So we didn't do that neither anymore. And how we would all go together and go trick speeding, walking, of course, from the other end where my grandma lived. 
maybe up to where Chicago Corners is or go back up back home again. So. Was there any uh, uh, sleigh rides or hay rides? None that I can remember, we never went on any. Mm -hmm. And the type of transportation did the, your dad car? No, he did not always have a car. He didn't have a car probably until I was around, again, 9 or 10 maybe. I think it was, I'm not sure if it's a model year or model. But it was one you had a crank, I remember I that. <laughs> but I don't know which make it was. Mm -hmm. It was only for going back and to work. What did you do shopping? What shopping we did, we'd go up to Freedom. At that time, there was Joe Gaines and there was uh, one of the I can't remember what it was. But we didn't do very much, go shopping very much. Once in a great while, we would go to the pier and do some shopping. But outside of that, on Seymour once in a while, we had a neighbor that would always come over and want my to take him to Seymour. So then if they had to be, had to be gotten, we'd get it there then. Um, were you guys involved in any kind of activities uh, you know, within the tribal structure or in the community that you can remember? No, they weren't. Mm -mm. Did, uh, where did you start school? I started school at Elm Hill, about seven miles north here on E, and went there for three grades. Then in my fourth grade, I went to Nailsville, the uh, boys' school. Okay. And then I came home, and the next year we, we went back, but then we uh, were on both sides, and they were too mean. Back, and so we finished Freedom. Elm Hill. So I graduated from Elm Hill, then went to Westy Pier, graduated from there, W. B. Now, when you went to school, did you have to stay there during the course of uh, school, or did uh, at certain times? We were able to come time, and then if my dad sent us home, they sent us home with my parents bringing the parents home and after Christmas time. Uh, were you there with your sister? Just my brother. My sister stayed home. Give me a kind of an atmosphere of the school. Feel about it, and uh, what or some of the things that. Uh, may have been different from, you know, going to regular public school, if at all. I think the thing that was different from going to public school is that we had to be more responsible and we learned a lot of independent living. Uh, everybody had chores in the morning. The big girls had chores in the after, after school. And we had to have a school on a schedule that we had to all abide by. And I think that was a lot of good training from my point of view, that... Um, Nobody was going to come along and make my bed, for instance, for, or pick up my clothes, or get the ones washed I needed, and things like that. We were responsible for doing that. And also to know that, um, like even in a home, if everybody worked a lot easier than just one or two doing it. And we knew, too, uh, we had a the rules. If not, we knew there were consequences. And I think that was another good thing that... Um, I learned, you know, it was kind of instilled in me. Overall, you would look at it as a positive experience for yourself. For myself, it was positive. Now, if you ask my brother the same question, he would say, no, it was not a positive uh, experience for him. Well, the first whole year was. Um, but he had a lot of um, a hard time with the students by making fun of him and teasing him and things like that. So. But outside of that, um, the experience, even when I got there, was good. Oh, you came back, you went to Elm Hill, mm -hmm. and then you left there and went to? Freedom. Freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, the West of Pier, I'm sorry. The West of Pier. <laughs> tell me some of the activities that you were involved in as you were growing up. Uh, 
let's say during the summertime, uh, did you go cherry picking or did you uh, uh, you know, go to the apple orchard or bean picking or things like that? Ever since I can remember, it was bean picking, cucumber picking, and then when I got to a older, I went cherry picking with my aunt and her family. And I never went apple picking because I was told I was too small and it was too much work for me. But I also hold in the garden. I picked mustard when I was about eight or nine years old. And um, hold carrots that were about an inch high and these were probably about three feet high. That was a little hard, but I did all those things. And mom and my aunt Cynthia always was along with us because we'd go as a group for the kids. So they were kind of like chaperones for us and that, so. And went berry picking, a strawberry, well, strawberry picking, and we went picking um, June berries when I was little. During the winter months, we went real awful, and we would go sliding as much as we could, and just go to the neighbors and talk, do different things. What about uh, when you got a little bit old? Uh, were the dance halls still in uh, opening and running? Oh yes, Vans Valley was, and Scott was, uh, White Eagles was. They would have dance once in a while. But when we went to um, the dances at Vans Valley, they used to have what they called um, Eddie, oh, I can't think of his name now. But he was a radio announcer in Green Bay, and he would bring out his shows out here. Then after the show, it would be dances. Then after a while, it was Cousin Fuzzy who would put on the shows, Then they would have their dances there. And it lasted, um, gee, I was an adult before the dances stopped because there's a lot of weddings and different kind of wedding um, dances that they dance. Roses, I remember wedding dances, and she had um, roller skating in her for a while that she had in her dance hall. Most of the uh, dances I remember over at um, Vans Valley. Mm -hmm. What about ball teams? Was their baseball uh, pretty popular? Oh, yes. Yeah. Baseball was real popular. Every Sunday, baseball games either at the other end or at this end, they would have a ball game that people would go to. So it's a regular family following of the games. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. You went to, uh, were you involved in any other uh, social? Remember? Mm, that kept me pretty busy. Uh, we'd work, as a group, we'd go roller skating in Green Bay when we could get transportation to go there. Uh, we went to movies, rode our bikes around a lot, and just got together with with friends and rode bikes or just walked around. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, I can't think of anything else. High school, there's a lot of activities I did not attend or go to because we didn't have the transportation to come home after school or to go there like even on weekends. So uh, there are a couple of times that we went to um, the um, homecoming, but I can only remember like two of those out of the four years that I went to. What was your feeling about high school? How was it uh, in terms? Uh, was it, a, was it the good times or was it pretty tough? Well, to me it was like something I had to do. It was kind of expected of me to have to do it. And I was a book, so I'm, and every day carrying back, and the next day, but very seldom did I do any work in it. Um, I don't think that it was hard. I think the thing I remember about school days was being in chemistry class and there was a, we were partners with um, chemistry desks and one, my partner was over here and the um, instructor was giving us some, um, I can't even think of what, a type of thing. 
And he started a fire to us. He told me to pray. No, you started it. You prayed out well. Our instructor turned around. All he saw was a flame coming in. <laughs> we all had to evacuate to school. And I thought of it as being dangerous until I think we were after high school. But all the chemicals there and everything, you know, and I think it happened to him <laughs> because of it. But so you made everybody get out of school, huh? Right. We got out of school for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh. Now, once you, uh, once you finished school, what did you do then? I went to high school for about two years, and then um, my mom was killed in an automobile accident. So I came home, and Dad said I had to stay home so I didn't go back and finish. Then I started a family, and then when my youngest one was about 14, I think, is when, it, when um, can't remember now how old she was. Maybe she was about 14. Anyway, I um, went to NWTC and went to the first course for uh, business machines. And then I was hired at um, Oh, the IR uh, Department of Revenue in Appleton. It was that just sent to uh, UWGB, and I got to work in the office, the registration office. Saw different people that were going back that were my age and older, so I decided to give it a try. So I went back about one year. I had a heart attack. So I took a leave of absence, and my administrator kind of made to make up my going back to her, oh, I was going to go back. I was going to do it, but I didn't go back. The, of June, um, I went to the um, language culture program at that time. He called me and asked me if I'd be interested in learning the language. Certainly would. He said, "Well, come to work Monday." So I went and started working there. And after I was there probably about six months. They said we all had to take university courses to become certified teachers. So that's how I got into going into a GD. Got certified, and luckily again, uh, after I got my sort of after I got my degree, they told me I could no longer work in a language culture program because I was now certified and had to go public schools and get a job. Well, fortunately, the school, tribal school just opened, so I was hired there. Continued working there. When did you I was 21 with my first child. Mm -hmm. so. And what, how many children do you have? I have three. I have one son and two daughters. Okay. My What's son the... being the oldest. Barber, Anita Barber. Husband. James Barber. See. It's Chip from LCO. I see. My brother to my cousin Wilma at the time, and he was down at was with his stepbrother, and that's where I met him mm -hmm. by my aunt. Well, um, did you stay in the area once once you uh, married? Uh, and then we went to, we lived in uh, Ohio for a while, and we lived in Florida for a while. See where else did we live? I think just the States. Was that because of the yeah. What did he do? He was a construction laborer. I think that's what general laborer he was. Did you have the three children when you traveled then? I had one child who was in Ohio, and then I was expecting my third one when we moved to Florida. I see. So we, I had her down there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you there? Yes. My husband got laid off, and we moved back, well, as far as Chicago, and I couldn't get home to me. He says, Daddy, can I stay a little while? 
or then we stayed in about a house up a place for my dad. That's when you took to school. Um, it was a while that okay. I started going back. Okay, now you say so you were at the district and you left the language project uh, uh, to go to the tribal school. To, no, you tribal school. In 1979. And what did it consist of? The classrooms were four walls and a chalkboard. If you lucky in a little piece of chalk. That's when the first year opened up. How many rooms? Uh, we had uh, the lower part. Let's see. One, two, four, five, six, seven. Rooms we had. And how many were the, well, working with you? Oh, I'm working there. I'm going to say probably about 12. 12. And First teachers? Right. Okay. And in capacity did you work? First year I was second combination grade. And then the second year I was a first grade. Then I went to fourth grade for several years. Then I went to third grade. I went to fifth grade for several years. Then I went to fourth grade for a short time. Then a reading specialist, and now I'm in a computer lab teaching K five. Did you have to uh, like continuing learning courses during years? Well, when I I was fortunate enough to get a lifetime certification. Oh, okay. So I don't need to keep my credentials updated. So what I did was my master's degree. So I got a master's degree in instruction. I got that from UW in Milwaukee, and then I heard I could get a master's degree in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So I received a degree in technology, education technology, through Cambridge, Massachusetts. About what time frame was that? I believe my master's. 87 and maybe about 87, 86, somewhere in my second master's. You hold your master's then. And what? Technology. Technology. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, during the course of this time, uh, you were working at home plus working out then, raising your children? I was working out, raising my children, and school to the end. Mm. That's mm. quite a quite a, a load to carry. Yeah, at the time it didn't seem like it. I think because maybe I was enjoying all of them, you know, so it didn't seem like it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, from the infancy of the, of the right, and right now. It's it's grown considerably. It certainly. Has. And what are some of the feelings that you have in uh, what you would like to see uh, for the school? You're still in the in uh, say what what department? Technology. From Technology. K mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any areas that you'd like to uh, uh, see expanded or improved? Uh, do you have any feelings about any of that thing? Feelings about the students as to how to reach them, to make them motivate them to want to learn. Sometimes they, um, like right now with No Child Left Behind, it's really kind of difficult because so many mandates are coming down on teachers. But you, and it's just middle school or the Native American children. It's all children throughout the United States as well. There are so many that are just not learning. They can come to school and like, for like, in order to be classified for special education, a child has to be two years behind 
end the subjects. Well, to me, by that time, it's too late. So there should be some kind of an intervention in between the level they are, they're supposed to be on and special ed so that all, ch all the children can learn to their capabilities. I realize there are some that will not be able to do that, you know, but those that are capable. Because right now we have just many students that are in special ed, and that's what I would like to see have them corrected. And also that are considered ADD, ADD or ADHD. I think a lot of it has to do with their diet and different things, and I'd like to see some of that uh, to and worked with. Because as well as behavior sometimes can prevent them from learning. Are you working with I'm thinking close to probably about 89. It's more in there. Mm -hmm. Could be more, but I'm just guessing at that. Okay. Uh, the growth of the tribe has been, you know, tremendous. Mm -hmm. And is you know, besides the school that you're working in, are there other areas that uh, you would like to see the on or improve on or move away from or delete? Own opinion. Over Number one thing I, I could think of is to have um, housing for teenagers, like 18, you know, and over. A lot of them that have been in foster homes for lo so long, it is just sending them back to their home to let them go to a place like this so that they get, um, I guess, living experiences and to know what it is to take care of themselves, to be responsible. And the other thing I would like to to see, and I think back to my teenage years and, and younger, is to have some kind of a experience program for, say, even like 10 years old, to give them something to do, give them learning skills about what a workplace is like. And I know right now it's hard to think about that because of laws that mandate that you can't do that. But try that something To help them keep them out of gangs and keep them out of um, getting in trouble with things, you know, alcohol and drugs and things like that. What's your feeling about the uh, casino that we have? It's pros and cons. Pros is it's helping the tribe, like they have in school and different, like such. The drawback is that I don't know how many have become addicted to it and how many um, are losing homes or whatever because of it. But taking that, that away, I think it's a good tribe to have. What, uh, what kind of recommendations would you give the youth? In, you know, in their journey as they're coming. To never forget who they are, where they're from, and to learn as much as they can, get all the education they can. Okay. I think I neglected to ask you, uh, you said you had uh, those two children? Three. Three. Uh, do you have any grandchildren? I have, um, have to in that window. <laughs> I think, let me see now. Nine. You could just say a whole bunch of <laughs> for everything. <laughs> Probably about 15, somewhere in there, I'm going to say. <laughs> they keep going too fast, I can't keep up with them. <laughs> well, 15 about, huh? About that, and I have um, two great-grandchildren. Two? two of them, two little girls. Ooh. I won't ask you to give me the names of the 15, but the two great grandchildren to you. To Kenya and Genesis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, are they all from around here? 
Yes, they are. Yeah. All mm -hmm. the grandchildren? Grandchildren? Yes. Wow, that makes yeah, a big. Uh, when do you all gather together? Christmas time is a good time that we always in. Once in a while, be um, Thanksgiving, but mm -hmm. because they have so many places to go as well, so we kind of try to say, okay, we're going to have supper, or we're going to have breakfast, sure. or you know, dinner, or whatever, so that everyone can come if they want. Or we just there's that we're cooking. We'll be here all day. Come if you want. How do you handle Mother's Day then? Mother's Day, I tell my children um, not to buy me what Mother's Day is Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. The reason being that is because uh, I'm, I'm a special person as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Because my kids will buy me things all year long, you know, they'll come, here mom, this is for you, you know. When, you bought, when I saw this, so it's kind of like to me, Mother's Day is every day, and I let my kids know that. Mm -hmm. You know, I said we don't need that one special day to let my mom. Every day is. Every day, every is. day is. Good. Mm -hmm. What else you'd like to share with us? I can't think of anything else right now. Mm -hmm. Did you bring a book that you wanted to? Uh... No, I didn't bring a big book. <laughs> it's the only thing that I've experienced about grandmother. The one in Ida is mm -hmm. when. Um, we were I was quite small, must have been about only about three or four maybe. I remember living there for a while. The family. Not only there was only probably five of us then. Aunt Reno lived in that same house with with us. I don't know how many children she had. Probably was about three or four. Then my aunt, other uncles lived there and my aunts lived there. And she always was taking people in. You know, they'd come and say, I need a place to stay. And it was like, okay, the door is open. But what I remember about that is that my cousins and I used to play outside. And when the trains would go by, the depot that was in Oneida, about my grandma's house, they'd start slowing down. So what we'd do, we'd go out there and wave to the engineer and uh, the caboose man. And after a while, I got to where when they were going by, they'd throw out oranges and apples and candy and stuff for us, you know, so it was really a big treat for us, and that was the excitement of our days when, when they would go through. That would be a lot of fun. And I remember seeing my dad and uncles jump the train and ride to Oneida, and then, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Now, you, uh, you're in the technical, you said? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. And what is that, uh, give me a description of the responsibilities there. I need to teach the technology skills from kindergarten through the fifth grade. That's like learning how to use a mouse and learning how to do word perfect and sing, laughing, um, doing word searches. So it's each specific skills they have to learn in benchmark that they have that we that I have to teach to them. The teaching them. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. Yeah, kindergarten are just really kindergarten. kindergarten. Oh, my stars. Yep, they start. Well, that means if you to teach them, you got to be one step ahead of everybody then. Right. <laughs> where do you do? Where do you go? Or is it taught in terms of uh, uh, making great? You know, learning new skills. How do you? Fortunately, I found a, uh, it's coloring dot com and. All the way through skills that they need to learn from K through five. Well, it's K through eight, but I only do the fifth grade. So to go on air and to observe, to see if they're not just crazy or if they're paying attention to what's going on. Where okay. that location? Where did it come? Learning that on the internet. That's where I better go. <laughs> it's oh, you know, and it's. I recommend the teachers to go through it because it does teach them an awful lot. They usually have like a 30-day trial that's free, and that's how I got it. And after I got it, I thought, hey, this is good. So let's turn this to again. You still have to know benchmarks for the kids. They have to know, you know. To mm -hmm. Then now this one on the internet again, and it's called headsprout.com. Headsprout? Sprout. Hmm. And pre and to 
Youwantlearning.com. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're in your tribe. How long have you been working with for this tribe? So it'll be my 25th year. While well, working for the tribe, I'll 28. 28 years. Because I have a language teacher. Graham, I worked there three years and now then. Hard to yes. And you're going to keep going as long as you're healthy? I think so. I don't want to stop. I illnesses, and I think for me, it's better for me to keep going than get on a pity pot, you know, and see. Even if you did retire, you may you wouldn't retire from any activity. I would hope not. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. so you search all the time, huh? Time. Once in a great while, I'll get on and go. When you're working with computers all day and teaching the skill, it's kind of like, i enough for that for oh, a while. Okay. Go out in the garden. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Well, if you have any other stuff you want to share with us? I remember when my sister was born. Doctor Bill came in, born, hunting. When he'd come back, they'd have rabbits strung out on their belt, and then I was the one that left to hold rabbits. Paws, they're called feet, mm-hmm. so that my dad could get them. So that. One thing, and I think that's where we got a lot of our meat from. Skin rabbits, too. Oh, right? yes, when I was very young. <laughs> <laughs> have frog legs if I want to do that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a side, side of us, uh, side to you I haven't seen yet. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Well, we appreciate it. I want to thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. Now he'll 